Good morning. Welcome to our home. We're here on this Wednesday morning because we had snow last night. Um, I think schools are two hours late because I just saw a bus going on the road now. Andy's, our son Andy's been plowing out our driveway, which we're thankful for. And Joy was shoveling the boardwalk. Um, we had, I think we got less snow than they predicted, but still it was enough that we are here instead of at church. And so welcome. And so while Steve's coming, he was in his office doing the prayer call. I'll share from my Enjoy journal while he's getting ready. My notebook. Oh, this is one that... It starts out, I did not enjoy. Just remembering the last few days, I think of some things I did not enjoy. One was when I dropped our pen when I was in the exercise room on the treadmill. I accidentally dropped our pen down under the treadmill. And we had to stop everything, hoist it up, retrieve it. And then Steve said, this needs to be clean before we set it down, which I agreed was really dirty. But I just wasn't in the mood for cleaning. My notebook. It's here. The notebook? Yeah, your notebook's here. But anyway, uh, we did it. Joy helped us unlatch it and get it set back down. I ended up wiping off everything in our small exercise room, vacuuming. Oh, there. That part I enjoyed. The other thing, a few days later, our, is it a, called a router? Yeah, what, our right, router yeah, quit router. working. So you know, I was going in the exercise room, no TV, nothing would work on it. So we ended up having to go moving Steve's bedside table in his bedroom and our bedroom and finding out it was unplugged. Well, that was an easy fix. But once again, Steve says, it needs to be clean back here before we put stuff back. I agreed. And so, again, I didn't feel like doing it, but I did it. Got the vacuum, did a little bit extra. And again, after it was done, I enjoyed that part. So this just kind of made me smile. There's times where um, we're doing stuff that we really don't enjoy, but it's necessary. Just like yesterday here, I took veggies out of the fridge for Joy and Elsie to munch on, and Steve's dipping thing was on top. I dropped it. It spilled all over. But Joy and Elsie helped me clean it up. So like Penny would say, better than ever. It's cleaner than it ever was. Yeah. So anyway, just keeping the, the right framework, framework, right frame of mind. In this, it's like our extended winter. One other thing I realized I said last week about our dentist, he had big muscles because he was a wrestler. He was a weightlifter. Yeah. He was a weightlifter. That's why the muscles were so big. <laughs> okay, honey, you ready for a teaching time? Yeah. Are you ready? Do you have your Bible? Yeah, ready? you'll want your Bible. Maybe a pen and paper. We've been talking about something that's been really meaningful to Joyce and I for the last 50 years. And this will be 50 years now. In, for me in July and Joyce in August that we received what some call the prayer language or tongues. or uh, and It's a gift that... <clears throat> can be used, the Lord uses some people to use it for public meetings, but I believe even more so it's used in private oh, devotion, just yes. like the Apostle Paul said, yes. that he spoke in tongues more than all the Corinthians, which mm -hmm. who spank, spoke a lot in tongues. But 
he said in a service, I don't do it unless, you know, and then we're looking at some of those things. But I know that many churches and where we grow up, we're so thankful for the churches we, we grew up mm -hmm. in. Yes, very. You know, it was the Reformed Church in America and the Christian Reformed Church, mm -hmm. and they really taught us, I'd say, the real essential things mm -hmm. of the Word. You know, Foundational. About Jesus. Yes. We yes. love the Lord and taught us so many good things. Yes. <clears throat> so we're really thankful, but we didn't have much emphasis on on this particular area, the Holy Spirit. it wasn't experienced a lot in our denominations. I think it is more so now, but <clears throat> but anyway, we're talking about that. And it's something that is used in our everyday lives. And we know, well, it's by millions of people around the globe. Yes. You know, many have received that. Um, last week we talked about how that prayer language, when we use it, when we pray in it, um, and that's a big part of it, it's prayer. It's connected. That's, I think, what we're calling this series, prayer language, what do we Pray call it? The prayer, the, prayer, the language of prayer, the prayer language. Um, and what it is, it's a tongue that's not our English tongue, it's a different tongue's. But I think there's different ones that come over time and over the years. As you use it more, there are other languages that come too. But then there also can be an interpretation of it. And I think the results, and we'll be talking about that either today or possibly another time. But last week we talked about how when we use that tongue, it says he was, and this is 1 Corinthians 14, 4, it says he who speaks in a tongue edifies himself. And in other words, it builds themselves up, or we give, gave the illustration of like a battery, a battery charger. <clears throat> you need to be connected, and it seems like the connection is, it's in the vine, Jesus is the vine, we're the branches, but then, and the Holy Spirit, and uh, it recharges us like we do with our devices. You know, like uh, a phone, an iPhone, or a cell phone. You know, there's a, a place here where we plug a cord in, and it goes into the electrical current, yes. and it's recharged. Yes. And it's built up so that it can be used again. Other without that charge, it's useless. You know, without the energy coming through it, that's what yeah. we found out with our router. <laughs> Well, there was, we have two routers in our house. One's right by the television. It's through Paul Bunyan Communications. And, but they also, because our house has got a link, quite a bit of length to it, they put in two of them. Mm -hmm. And I, had, I looked at the one, but I had forgotten about the first one. <laughs> That's and why it was the, so dusty back there. <laughs> I was on the phone with the man from Paul Bunyan, and he was helping me, and and he could tell, he knew we had two of them by the information okay. we had there, and he could see that the first one was the one that wasn't the first one. Oh, yeah, that's right. They have <laughs> one, there's one in our bedroom, and as it comes in the house, it goes there first. And we were looking at it, and here it was unplugged. That would do it. I mean, unplugged? That would yeah, do it. So we need to stay plugged. <laughs> you know, it's like Jesus said in John 15, the vine and the branches. Yes. But this praying in the Spirit, I think, is something that helps us to stay charged. But today we're Also gonna, the word <clears throat> connected. You're right. Connected and charged. Yeah. Yeah. But today we're going to look at... Verse, do you want to read verse 21, 1 Corinthians 14? Are you open there? And you can look there too. Yes. There with us online. It says, With men of other tongues and other lips, I will speak to this people, and yet for all that they will not hear me, says the Lord. Yeah. And so this is Paul, and he's, this is this chapter when he's talking about tongues, and that's what he's referring to here. 
as you can read the whole the rest of that chapter too to get the context but today i just want to go from that you know he was quoting from isaiah 28 paul was and he's talking here about a rest and a refreshing that comes to us when we're praying in the spirit <laughs> And so then we go down, let's look at that reference. That's Isaiah 28, and starting at verse 11. Give me just a second to get there. Isaiah 28, and starting at verse 11. <clears throat> For with stammering lips and another tongue, he will speak to this people. To whom he said, and this is speaking of God, this is the rest with which you may cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing. So this is what Paul was referring to. And this is what he was quoting there in 1 Corinthians 14 was this scripture. So what I've mm -hmm. written there is personal refreshing. Yes. And it's day by day. And also the word rest is in there. Yeah. This is the rest with which you may cause the weary to rest. Mm -hmm. And this is the refreshing. Well, anybody out there ever need, feel like you need rest? Oh, yeah. <laughs> From what's all going on yeah. in everyday life and yeah. in the world, in our nation and and things, just daily things with what we do. We need rest. And there's, we need physical rest. We need good sleep at night. But then we also need rest in our emotions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In our, and in our spirit. I think that's what I was feeling when it seemed like things were heading towards melting some time ago. And then we, we've gotten snow. <laughs> the grandkids are building igloos in our front yard and we they, got big piles. Do you, and think, so, do you think, can you move the camera and will they be able to see that out there or can, do you have to bring it to the window? I think Joy stubbed her toe <laughs> right when she came over she here. She said, move the light out of the way. Oh, okay. Bend it down. Can you see it out there? Winter Wonderland. And it's... Even though the calendar said Monday was the first day of spring. <laughs> and it's still coming down. <laughs> too. So I'm going to stay so emotionally refreshed. <laughs> but anyway... Well, we're, what Paul is referring us to with this thing of the prayer language and what this is explaining to us here from Isaiah is that there is a refreshing and there is a rest in the prayer language as we use it. Mm -hmm. It can calm us down. Yes. That word rest there, the Hebrew, in my Bible, there's a word wealth there for that word it is. This is the rest, it says. And it says uh, in the word wealth, it says resting place, place of stillness, repose, consolation, peace, rest, a quiet place. Also the condition of restfulness. Mm -hmm. This word is derived from a verb meaning to rest, to soothe, to settle down, to comfort. Mm -hmm. This word describes something that is greatly soothing, comforting, and settling. As in Psalm 23, verse 2. And that's where it says, He leads me besides the waters of quietness. The same Hebrew word. Mm -hmm. the, the quiet waters or the still waters it's just, that's the same Hebrew word as what's used here for the tongue and like we were saying I think it was last week tongues is something you can use pretty much anywhere even if you are in public places you don't have to do it out loud you can kind of whisper it or even under your breath but 
like if you're driving in a car, you can use the prayer language while you're driving to and from work or mm -hmm. to do errands in town or whatever you're doing. And it comes as we ask Jesus to baptize us in his Holy Spirit. And that's for any believer to receive. You know, it's I not would, just for some, but no, for everybody. I, as I was getting ready this morning, I kept having the thought how how does anyone really receive salvation? I, well, I know how you receive it, but there's no one on the face of the earth that's ever lived or living now when they receive salvation. Like that Muslim, was it a boy at youth camp, received the Lord? It couldn't have been because he totally understood it, everything in his head about it. In his head was everything he'd been, been taught about the Muslim religion. He was taught that our religion was wrong. He was taught our religion was wrong. And so it, oh, okay. the question was, how, how is that, Lord, purposely? God must have planned it, that salvation is not meant to be figured out up here, but it's to be received in the heart by faith. Just trusting God is God. This is his gift for me, and I want his gift. Well, it's the same thing with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You know, we received almost 50 years ago, I do not understand everything about it. I wouldn't be able to teach a, a theological class on it. All I know, I receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit in the very same way I receive salvation. I'm so thankful. I didn't have to it's figure it out. It's, it's by faith. It. It's simple. And it's not earned. No. <laughs> it's just like salvation from sin. Yeah. You know, being born again, we don't earn that. Yeah. We can't earn our righteousness by being good enough or, no. or like this. Or, oh, I'm just not good enough to have that gift or something. That's not where it's at. It, it helps us. Mm -hmm. It strengthens us. It edifies us. It recharges us, it builds us, builds us up, it brings rest to us, brings us beside the still waters, Yeah, restores our soul. Mm -hmm. There's a restoring that happens, restoring of our soul. Yes. Hallelujah. <clears throat> so going back to the thing of understanding, I remember it would have been almost 50 years ago, a little bit more, that well, yeah, because I remember sharing it, writing it all in a letter to my mom and dad. What, how Steve had given me this book, and I prayed this prayer, and it was something wonderful and beautiful, but I wanted to share it with them. Well, I, I don't think dad ever said anything about the mom. I, she, she just... Her response was she did not understand that, and she thought it must be wrong. And I guess I could tell maybe she had talked to someone, maybe in the community, or they didn't have an understanding. Well, I, I didn't understand it myself. But I was so thankful that the love that my mother had for me and the love I had for her it was just that one time, just being honest, but I don't understand it. And then it was like, I think the Holy Spirit worked in her heart. He gave me extra love for her. And um, over the years, I prayed in the Spirit so many times for my dad and mom. I was so thankful because we lived hundreds of miles apart. I wasn't able to be connected to them physically, but I felt so connected to them with my prayers. And the thing is, if you could pray for them, because you sometimes didn't know how to pray. I didn't. With right. your understanding. I mean, right. there's a certain point where you just don't know. 
yes. what to pray. Yes. But uh, then when you do pray for them in the spirit, that's another way of saying it, in the mm-hmm. spirit, sometimes that's what's used, or in tongues. Yeah. Then there is a rest that comes. There yeah. is a peace. You yeah. come into a place yes. by the quiet waters instead of being all stirred yes. up inside and, oh, how, what's going to happen with mom or dad mm-hmm. or or kids or whoever. That's what Joyce and I, we have, and many of you, if not most of you that are watching this, are, are in our circle of prayer that we pray for every night. A lot of what we pray is in the spirit, in tongues for you. Before we go to bed and I feel pe- more peaceful after I'm done praying for you. You know, we pray for you because we love you. So the way that we do that is, um, Steve will put on YouTube probably a a beautiful nature scene or (laughs) something. That's what we've been doing lately. It's It's in the background, but then we just start praying together. We pray out loud in the spirit together, and we pray in English together, but we cover in in prayer the dear ones. My family is dear to me. Steve's family is dear. Our, our, our children, their mates, the grandkids. And we just list the church family. The church family. And sometimes the there's family. someone in the church family. We specifically name their name because that name comes. Let's see what will happen then is as we're praying, thoughts will rise to mm-hmm. our mind about a specific person maybe. Yes. So then we'll pray for that specific. We also have in that prayer circle like missionaries and people that we know in mm-hmm. uh, other places. And But someone will just come to our, yes. our thoughts and even something to pray for them in English. Yeah. Yeah. And I believe a lot of times that is inspired or brought forth. It was a, To our, us, it was a mystery to pray mm-hmm. about that thing. Mm-hmm. But then it wasn't. I mean, it was an interpretation, you could call it even, of that tongue. Mm -hmm. And we'll get more into specifics at some point with some of that, too. That's what I really like, is how personal the Lord is, as personal as He is to me. When we can pray for someone like um, Isaac and Mackenzie, my nephew and his wife, there's been special prayers in English and in the spirit for them with her recovering from that snowboarding accident. And uh, for Peter and Linnea, their first baby born no, yesterday. You can announce no, it. You can say. So, novella, joy. <laughs> There's another joy. Yes, but just. There's a lot it, of joy. See, I'm not in their your hospital room, they're in the hospital saying, what do you need prayer? How do I pray for you? Um, so I pray in English, but I'll pray in the Spirit. Just as I'm cleaning the house or whatever I'm doing, that thought will be there. Sometimes there's certain people that, just like you, you're at home there or you're at work, and you keep on praying for certain people because you know there's a need. And it's that way of connecting. And you're connecting in a way, with the Father's love for that person or those people. And it just shows again his love. Yeah, that's right. And, and again, as we bless you. <laughs> <laughs> that was Joy Sneezy if you didn't hear it. <laughs> Joy went to camp this week. Yes. Or last weekend. Down in Alexandria, Camp Geneva, right? That's it's a Christian. That was in the oh, yeah. awesome. Oh, okay. It's a Lake Christian Geneva center. Christian. And the, what is it? Lake Geneva Christian Center. Lake Geneva Christian Center. But uh, they even had rock climbing walls. I mean, those were big rock climbing walls, weren't they? We watched so, the videos of some. So, enjoy me it. All the way to the top, except on the hardest one, right? She's a good rock wall climber. Yeah, she is. I saw her climb on a 
horizontal rock wall all the way around. Last summer. I was impressed, I must say. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyway, and they had people receive the baptism yes. of the Spirit there at that youth meeting. And yes. they, they worshiped the Lord. And they didn't want to stop worshiping, right? Oh, I and love then we it. know the feeling. It's, there's a peace that comes when you're doing that, isn't there? The closeness of his presence. Yeah. Maybe that's part of the thing with the tongues. You, that when you're praying this, you know it's not from you. And it gives you the sense of his close presence. Yes. I mean, he's there with you. You couldn't do that without Holy the Holy Spirit, Spirit giving you the utterance. Mm -hmm. But that brings peace. That brings yes. rest. Yes. There's one more scripture on that, and that's Isaiah 11, verse 10. And this uses the same word again as we saw in Isaiah 28, 11, that Paul was referring to in speaking about tongues. Uh, when it is, he says, with stammering lips and another tongue, he will speak to his people, to whom he will say, this is the rest that you may cause weary to rest. Well, that same word rest is used, as we said, in Psalm 23, verse 2 by the waters of quietness or the still waters, that word still, that's the same word, stillness, quietness, a rest. Mm -hmm. Well, Isaiah 11, verse 10, uses that same word also, and it says, in that, And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse. And we know who that is. That's, you know, Jesus, who shall stand as a banner to the people. For the Gentiles shall seek him, and his resting place shall be glorious. There again, that word, that's that same word, his resting place. And part of that, which Jesus brings to us, he's our baptizer in the Holy Spirit. He baptizes us. Part of that is the prayer language, I believe, that where that resting place comes, and it is glorious. Yes. It shall be glorious, it says. Like that. Um, I need to decide if I'm going to go on. I think we're going to wait with that next section till next week. What is that one going to be? Mysteries Unveiled. Oh, I like that section. See, part of that, we kind of <laughs> touched on it because, like, for instance, a missionary that's in Guatemala, like, we have someone we've known for 50 years probably. Mm -hmm. She was Carol Slimmer, now it's Carol Ruano. Her and her mm -hmm. husband Ronnie are in Cates Altenango, mm -hmm. Guatemala, and she's the director of a, a, a Bible training school down there where they train people to minister, be ministers. And uh, I don't know exactly what she needs today, but if I'm praying for her, I can pray generally in English what I feel I should, but then the mysteries, you know, to me, the mysteries, what else I should mm -hmm. pray for. If I pray for her in the spirit, yes, those mysteries are spoken forth, and I don't even ever need to know what they are. Mm -hmm. But again, as I pray in that tongue, um, a lot of times thoughts will just begin to come to my, mm -hmm. my mind, you know, and, that, of course, translates to English than when it's in my mind. Mm -hmm. For someone in Gates Alton Ingo, she speaks English very well and Spanish. Yes. So I'm not sure which <laughs> one comes to her in, but we'll, we'll get into that a little bit more next week. But to be studying on it, you can look at 1 Corinthians 14, really, the whole, that chapter is really good. Then we're going to go to 1 Corinthians 2, verses 9 through 14, and Ephesians 1, 16 through 18. So lots of good things we're talking about and praying about concerning this. And um, Yes. Praise God. Yes. Is there anything else that you have to I don't think so. Share? Did you have anything, Joy? <laughs> we are going to have an Easter breakfast in a few weeks. Your Easter's not that oh, far away. Easter. 
That means spring We're colors. We're getting rid of the snow tulips. a lot of it by then. Easter lilies. That's on April 9. And we love it. Us women church. love that. The tradition is the men and, and guys uh, do all the cooking, serving, and clean yeah. up. And we're going to have, it's going to be a really good service. We have yes. some people that are going to yes. be sharing in that. We're going to have a youth dance. Yes. What's the name of the song again? <laughs> you know? <laughs> that's right. Uh, something like what I see. What I see. I think that's it. Yeah. What I see. And so we're we'll be doing that special. the week before that on Sunday, Kent and Chantel Dudley and are going to be with us and we have knee. communion. Bended knee. We'll be having communion and and so that'll be good too. Next this Sunday, Dan Woodward is going to bring a message good. on healing. Yes. Physical healing. I would and yes. Dan is a gifted teacher, he's an anointed teacher. And I'm looking forward to his teaching on, yes. on healing, physical yes. healing. See, yes. that's another yes. thing we didn't hear a lot about when we were growing up, but we've come to hear about it now. And so we have experienced it yes, thank in you. our lives, and so we're going to share it. Well, and God's I blessings. Think, I think of Don and Maria. This Sunday. Are cooking. This Sunday. And maybe I can get Joy to take a live video of them cooking, and you'll see the big serving line. And since we finished that one video, the router went out or whatever, we might do that. We'll see. And then let you see it. Yeah. Okay. Well, blessings to blessings. you. Blessings. We love you.